and like we'll flash back a little bit and for people who yeah. don't who came came to shanghai a little bit later like waggis element fresh those are like sandwich salad places right so back in the day in shanghai you couldn't even get a fucking sandwich yeah right so they started it's pretty healthy they're still around they're very very successful you know we all still go to them but to go to like a diner where you could get like a greasy burger Right, like like a like a legitimate burger. There was only a couple places like Moon River, mm -mm -mm. right? Like to get like a brunch, like just high calories, lots of carbs. It was like Moon River and City Diner. Moon River is the original uh, chicken fried steak. Yeah, it was the only and, place. and no, no, it's like legit food. Like <laughs> and they places. did it authentically. Like the biggest gripe yeah. for us Western people back then was that like like you would walk into a Western restaurant and nine times out of ten, or almost even ten times out of ten back then, you'd be disappointed because. Oh, yeah. Not to their fault, but you had would, the standard built up from what you're used to back home. But but they would also purposely yeah. tweak the menu to the local twa taste. Oh, yeah, a yeah. lot of them, right? Because because obviously their business was probably suffering because you know maybe it, at first they were doing it like the authentic way, the Western way. But then they saw a lot of locals weren't really digging it, so then they had to like tweak it. But then for us who grew up in the West, when we go, and then we would expect one thing. But it will come out like very tweaked for the local palate here in China. We'd be like really disappointed because totally. it's just like what we expect. Totally. I mean, the the analogy would be like getting Chinese food in America. <laughs> you know, so I totally get it, right? Right. And then I think also the ingredients was much more difficult because it was, it the was. Chinese palate at that point was still very Chinese, and mm -hmm. now it's and, you know now it's very different. So I remember going to these places and like, uh, I think it was Greg was one of the owners at Moon River. Mm -mm. And so like these places are legit. And to your point, like these entrepreneurs, like pioneers in China, the frontier, they wanted, they had passion for their business. So they use better, you know, um, ingredients, et cetera. But yeah, city, city diner, definitely we had amazing, I mean, we had brunch there, but we also had like 4 a.m., just greasy ass. No, like, uh, Tone, Tone, like Tone and Lou back and in the I day. Have, yeah. We Dude, don't remember. We I, watched the sun come up many of a time. Many there. times. There, there was the blue frog on Tone and Lou, which I think was their second, their, their first <laughs> right. real Tone big, and Lou full used to be the frog. Frog. Used to right. the blue frog was still that formulaic sports bar yeah, thing. Right. But Manhattan's. city diner and Moon River were like, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. customized, right? But yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're very, very diner style, right? Yeah. And and so we felt like, okay, we we could do something, uh, which I'm not saying we were, but we felt we could be kind of a, a step up from that. Mm. And also, you we had met Gary, Boxing who was plus. already a, uh, a brewmaster in Shanghai. We didn't have to find somebody. Mm -hmm. he Where's like, Gary from, by the yeah, way? So Gary, uh, he's from... Texas and oh, he's from Texas. Yeah, he'll I'm from tell, Texas. He's very proud to be a Texan. Oh shit! You know, he Is he still Texas. here? He passed away unfortunately oh, in, in uh, 2010. But um, oh, no. for for us, uh, he was a big personality. He came out here to do craft beer with another concept, and uh, they they had kind of misrepresented the deal to him. Mm. So he wasn't happy with um, kind of what he discovered once he arrived. Mm. But he had seen enough of China and. In, and probably more so Shanghai that made him believe that craft beer really had a future here and he could play a hand in it. So he didn't want to leave. And of course, uh, there was a girl because there's always a girl involved. <laughs> uh, there was a girl that basically <laughs> fell in love with that made him feel like, okay, this is the other reason why I don't want to leave China. Right. And he had heard um, of uh, kind of our thing and he had met Kelly through a, a burger contest judging uh, that, that, that wow. summer in 2007. And he kind of Interesting. said, hey, I heard you guys are doing this. I'm looking for something uh, apart from what brought me over here. Are you guys interested to add craft beer to your, to your offer? Yeah. And we said, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Wow. Because you know, Kelly being from California, me being from Toronto, um, we had already knew what craft beer's potential was at that particular point. I mean, it was still early in the US. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say it, it was booming in the US, but you could already see it as this uh, up and coming thing that mm. we both felt was yeah. going to not be a fad, but something permanent in the US. Yeah. And uh, we, we all agreed that it was probably still a bit too early for China, but we felt if we could add the quality American style uh, bistro, concept to it um people could first enjoy the food mm -hmm. and then make their judgments about the beer and learn about the beer as they go mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and uh so that that that's what brought uh boxing cat together so, so what came it, first the food or the beer 
the or food the, definitely came first because um, Kelly and I first discussed doing something together before uh-huh. we even met Gary. And then he had heard about, okay, mm-hmm. you guys are doing this thing. I'd be keen to to come on board if you guys. This was 08, 09? This so is 07. 07. Yeah, wow. so, so this was uh, basically summer 07 when we met Gary. And uh, we signed our we we signed our spot. Uh, actually, it was uh, kind of a funny story, right? So we started talking early summer um, about doing this, and we had all said, "Okay, cool." You know, we're, we're, Gary's going to leave his gig uh, that that brought him here. We're going to start embarking on trying to find a location. We're going to establish a company. We're going to we're gonna, we're going to do this. So this was June two thousand and seven, mm-hmm. July can't find anything in terms of location that's suitable august can't find anything that's suitable um at this point i I, i've also had this conversation with my my cousin already saying like hey you know i'm gonna embark on my own thing he didn't take it that well but uh, i was like look i I feel like we've kind of come to uh, uh uh the end of the road here so i whether you like it or not this is happening right mm-hmm. and so uh everybody has given their commitment to this project mm-hmm. but yeah we can't find a location and you know kelly this was uh basically october right before october holidays <clears throat> this was three months had gone by we had not found a suitable location well that's because you just you guys weren't nothing was like kind of up to snuff to what you guys wanted or yeah, they well, were just they're, they're really i think being fair it was just actually something of a, a weird kind of devoid of suitable spots all the spots that we did see were either not great in mm-hmm. terms of location which is saying something because there's still a lot of opportunity back then mm-hmm. right or it was too expensive for what we could afford okay. right and so you know kelly had made plans to go somewhere for october holidays on vacation and and she said look guys um i know we've all committed to this but I can't keep putting, uh, this isn't the only offer I have on the table to do something. I can't keep putting things off uh, for this if it's just gonna be kind of an endless journey to find location. So uh, I don't wanna be the bearer of bad news, but if I if I come back, uh, which she was going for, I, I think uh, like three weeks back to the US or something. And she's like, look, if when I come back and we don't have anything and we don't think we're gonna have anything anytime soon, I, I probably have to, you know, think so about she gave my, a deadline to the yeah, project. Yeah, well, I probably have to think about maybe another mm-hmm. project idea. I can't just do this indefinitely. Mm-hmm. And as luck would have it, during that time she was away, one night Gary uh, was having this conversation with another guy at a random bar um, just about brewing beer. And, you know, Gary's been known to drink and ramble. Uh, <laughs> so he's rambling <laughs> about making beer and... Uh, uh, this this Chinese guy uh, just rocks up to him at the bar and says, hey, um, you know how to make beer. And Gary's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a brewmaster. So the guy's like, okay, great, because I have equipment. Do you want to help me make beer? And so the, the basic pitch went, they have this equipment, they have a location, um, they have a company who's the parent company, I should say, where the business is water filtration. And they had heard that, you know, one of the best key ingredients of making a good beer is the quality of the water. Mm-hmm. So that to showcase how great their uh, water filtration technology was in China, um, they wanted to make high quality beer cool. to to showcase the quality of the water <laughs> That's so pretty cool. so so you know they're they're it's so serendipitous uh, right it? right but but that that was trying to early on right like you never know like where what, did they what? meet was it in a at bar? random bar yeah and he had overheard gary talk to he was sitting beside them we should go to more bars they had overheard about the gary, right and, and then like uh and then yeah so gary went out and uh went to take a look at the equipment and uh, they had this kind of uh, basically 350 square meter over three floors kind of space. And they were going to do their bread and butter, which is the water filtration. And they are, they also had a fireplace business and they just <laughs> wanted kind of like to put this equipment here to showcase the quality of the water. And this was where the American school was in uh, Pusi, 
So past Hongqiao Airport out west. Uh, oh right. And, and so this wasn't even a business idea for them. It was just like you said, they were just wanting to do this marketing. To showcase. Yeah, marketing. Like the marketing. real business was the water. Yeah, they, they were just doing they this weren't as making this as a business, just marketing. Like I'm, I already, I already have this main business. I just want. I heard I just a want to great it testament to beer. water quality is mm. a great beer. So mm -hmm. I want to make a great beer. But that's a testament to like creativity of um, people in China. That's why China is like. Yeah. I mean, it's coming up, right? <laughs> I mean, people are creative motherfuckers. You, you got to give them yeah. credit, right? Because, yeah, that 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 is a stretch by any means, right? But Gary went Love out it. and uh, he's like, okay, uh, it's not where we want to open out in the middle of really nowhere right but um, there's a lot of villa communities around the american school right. um, there's the american school the british school and not too far away there's the french german school so you have this uh villa of expat uh communities here that already know what craft beer is could appreciate western food this might be kind of like a diamond in the rough nobody was there on that strip other than Starbucks and a Papa John's and a rendezvous. Do you guys remember rendezvous? That was one of the initial burger mm, joints. I don't remember it, no. It was one of the initial burger that joints that was good. But uh, anyways, <laughs> so so rendezvous was there and rendezvous is the only game in that whole strip for the Shit. community. So he's like, all right, guys, you know, I've come here. I've taken this look at your equipment. Uh, I can't make beer for you because I have business partners that have committed to and I, I don't want to just consult on this but why do you guys want on this space you don't need uh you know 350 square meters for your uh, fireplace and water filtration uh kind of business why don't you just focus on that you take uh as much space as you need for that rent us the rest of the space at a great rent and we'll we'll operate it and we'll serve the beer and say it's from your water filtration technology mm -hmm. Right, and, and and so that's how the first boxing cat. Oh, uh, the, so wow. the first founded. boxing cat wasn't on. It Fus wasn't. Fushilu. Yeah, it wasn't on Fushing Shilu. What? It was way out Did you know in this? the American no, school. No, I, I, because I thought Fushing Shilu was the OG location. No, yeah. no, that was the first city location, but that was 09. So in 08, we opened in the middle of fuck nowhere uh, near, <laughs> oh, near the American school, right? And but it seems like you had a lot of demand, but no supply. And then once you guys moved in, there must have been, uh, the business must have been pretty good. So, for all so the schools um, in interesting that you, you say that because, you know, we, so we opened out there uh, after Kelly came back. We're like, all right, there's this location. Everybody <laughs> went there. The rent was pretty good. We're like, oh, this is amazing. We found a diamond in the rough. There, we're going to crush it because there's no competition out here, mm -hmm. right? So we go there. We, we all kind of uh, go through the design, and we, we uh, open it up April 2008. Great opening party in May. Great in June. July, kind of a dead ghost town because everybody that summer lives break. there, summer break, they're all gone. And, uh Okay. I, I guess this is uh, Judy Town, right? Like, Judy, there's no, there's no people there. But it'll get better in September when everybody comes back late August, and you know, yeah. we get back into the swing of things. Tough on a new business, but hey, you know, this is the location we chose. So yeah, we we weathered July and August, which are tough, and then yeah. uh, <clears throat> we we come to September. Okay, great, you know, I'm kind of back on track. August, uh, sorry, October hits, oh, shit. and that's the global economic kind of downturn recession. Oh, fuck. October yeah. two thousand and eight, right? Yeah, that community is mostly comprised of the big three auto from the U.S. Oh, so so GM, Chrysler, Ford, um, and and uh, uh, yeah, basically most of our so it's a community business, and with community businesses anywhere especially when it involves expats uh you you have customers who have made up their minds whether they're your customers or not already because yeah it's a community there's no new people there's no there's no uh foot traffic passing by all the time mm -hmm. it's just right. this set crowd and so when you lose a huge chunk of your your customer base that has decided that they are your customer base you're not going to just fill it with people from other means because those people aren't coming for a reason. So, you know, here I am. Uh, I, I committed to my family to finish out 2008. And I put all my money 
into this business and I, I've mm-hmm. committed to this business full time starting January 1st, 2009. This place is now basically at a brink of losing all the money uh, come December of that, that we put in, even though it was a very promising start for us uh, with the economic downturn. And, you know, we, we had this kind of uh, come to Jesus conversation, right, between the three of us. And we're just saying, hey, I need to tell you guys, you guys being Kelly and Gary, you know, um, as much as I believe in my own abilities, I don't think it's a matter of how much time spent in this particular business that's going to make a difference for us. You know, I think this business is a community business. There's only incremental improvements that we're going to be able to make. Uh, We need to have a decision about whether we want to continue or not, because I don't, I don't see the point of me putting hundred percent of my time coming out here every day. And I, I think Kelly also understood the, the, the business and she agreed and Gary as well. And so we, we had a decision either. We said, this is not, you know, Shanghai is either not accepting, uh, not accepting this concept or we're, we're too early for this game in terms of adding craft fear to it. And we need to just kind of salvage our losses and, and kind of go on our respective lives however we need to. Or we dig and and goes back to my point earlier about finding, you know, kind of ways to to get the job done no matter what, right? Like that that mindset. Mm-hmm. Dig and, gr- and like being be- gritty. Yeah, believe believe that you, <clears throat> you you're onto something. And and we had reasons to believe we're onto something. Like I said, the first uh two to three months were actually very encouraging. Yeah. We also had a lot of media who had come out and said they love it, or people who came out from the city center who said they absolutely loved it. And this is back in the day where they reviewed by sending emails to the magazines. There was no mm-hmm. online mm-hmm. kind of platforms and people were pr- doing print mm-hmm. of people's reviews, right? Yeah. And we had always gotten amazing reviews, but people didn't really want to drive out like an hour and a half to two hours so just you, for a meal. And you like, you knew your customer base because they were coming in regularly. So like you could tap into their, like you could talk to them. Yeah. And they would tell you what was going on and you knew people and you knew who was coming in regularly. So you had a good pulse. We had a pulse. And, and like I said, we, we, we knew that people had raved um, about it when they were willing to make the, the trek from the city. But uh, the, the community, that business was kind of there. And uh, we, there's nothing that through time spent, extra time spent, that was going to change the, the, the big direction. Mm-hmm. So what ended up happening was we decided, look, we should have opened in the city anyways. We opened out here because of this random opportunity that kind of came by. And uh, what we really need to do is find ways to raise money to open in the city. Mm, yeah. And that that's basically what ended up happening. Uh, I had to go the old traditional way of begging, clawing for money with relatives. You know, um, After you left the business. <laughs> They owed me though. They owed me. <laughs> They're like, fuck you. <laughs> well, you they, were like, peace, motherfuckers. A few they, months later, you're like, uh, hey guys. <laughs> hey, I, I like that tie you're wearing today. Yeah. <laughs> Did you lose weight? You're looking good. Right. No, but I, I, I think um, the, the, the thing for me was, yeah, find, find a solution. Um, I was fortunate enough that my uncle um, felt bad about how things had ended between us. And I think he took pity on me and gave me a loan. And uh, the truth was, had I not made the business work, I had no idea how I was going to pay that loan back. Mm. But it, it's fine. I, I pitched them this idea. Oh, yeah, my parents are good for it. My parents were not good for it. But, <laughs> you know, but I was like, yeah, they're good for it. Uh, you know, no, we're, uh, we're, can- <laughs> we're, we're Canadians. It's all yeah, good. We're, we're not going to lie to you. We're family. Um, but basically, yeah. And then, and then Kelly found a way to raise money. And Gary basically sold half of his shares to one of our customers who really believed in the concept concept in that that Judy town area, who is still one of our our partners to this day. He basically um, came up with two uh, x the valuation to cover Gary's wow. part to yeah. to to open in the city. And you know, to to the the, the conversation earlier, when we kind of started the the renovation 
and the getup for the Fuxing Xilu location. At that point, nobody was doing business out there other than Jay Z. There was nothing there that Jay-Z. suggests that Jay- right down the street, the, yeah. the jazz club. Let, let's let's uh, for the listeners who may not know, it's not yeah. it's not Jay Z the rap artist. No, it's not. <laughs> I wish it was, but it was yeah. not Jay Z the first. It's jazz not Young Hove. Yeah, they're, 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 it's not Young Hove. 